Welcome back to The Investing Advantage. Today, I have a very special guest with me, John Mitchell. And uh, before we hit record, I, I mentioned to John that I'd heard him on a podcast not long ago. And I actually went out and started to really follow and dive into what John is teaching with his daily visualization, his 12 minutes a day framework. And what I thought would be kind of interesting, John, is because I know that uh, you didn't start like that, right? Like you didn't, you didn't have this framework until kind of recently, and it's based on the book, Think and Grow Rich, if I'm not mistaken. Right. But maybe you can kind of just take us back and tell a little bit about um, where you were prior to creating this framework, which has kind of really allowed you to accomplish, um, you know, really success and success in, you know, finance, family, relationships. Uh, but I think it's important to understand kind of where you came from and then how that has evolved after you um, created this visualization and what that really means. Right. Great. Well, you know, uh, I started out as a CPA and became an entrepreneur uh, in real estate development when I was 30 and was in like seven different businesses in my 30s and 40s. But, you know, Shane, when I turned 50, I just wasn't as successful as I thought I should be. And, and I really had two goals in my life. One is to make enough money so I didn't have to work. And the other was to find the woman of my dreams. And so at 50, I was falling short on both of them. And, you know, on the money, you know, I, I, tip, I did okay. I was making two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year net. But when I turned 50, yeah, I just did the math. And I know this sounds materialistic, but... I'm like, I realized I had to start netting over a million dollars a year if I want to have the exceptional life. And, you know, on the girl at 50, I'd never been married, uh, although I can say there was a lot of interviewing going on, uh, but never, never found the right one. Yes. And, um, and so at 50, I'm like, you know, how do I change this 20 year history? I mean, how, how, how am I going to make this massive change? And so one night, uh, probably three months after I turned 50, this pearl of wisdom comes to me as I'm laying in bed, find the, the top book in the world on success and apply that book literally word for word to my life. Well, you know, I'm like, wow, that is a good idea. And so I, I go and do a little research and I discover that there's one book that's been read by a hundred million people, whereas the next best selling book on success has been read by less than 10 million people. And that book is Thinking Grow Rich. And I, I bet you've you probably read it, haven't you, Shane? I've got Think of Grow Rich, and it was one of the first books that um, a mentor had uh, suggested to me. I read it a few times, and you know, it was, I think it was very good, but hard to actually kind of like Robert Kiyosaki's book, right? It's like these, right. it's like very theoretical and it's like, okay, so now what do I do? And, and that was my challenge with that book. Well, I'm, I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I read the book when I was 41 and it didn't change my life, but, but uh, let me, uh, now I'll share with you what, what did change my life from reading the book. And, sure. and, and so, you know, but that idea that I'm going to apply this, the top book in the world on success by a factor of 10 word for word in my life was a good idea. And, and it, especially when I saw how powerful that book had to be. I mean, the law of lar large numbers would tell you it's powerful. And mm -hmm. so I go, I get the book, I read the book, and then I discover the problem that you just alluded to. It says there's a secret for creating success, but he only gives you half of the secret. Well, you know, I'm bummed out. I'm like, I need the full secret. And uh, so I mope around probably for, I don't know, two or three weeks and saying, you know, one day I just get up and I'm like, John, just man up and figure out the full secret. Mm -hmm. And and so over the next two months, I just immerse myself in the book. And, and after two months, I figure out the full secret and a 12 minute a day technique to apply it. And so 
I started applying it to a uh, new business I started in the reverse mortgage business. And quickly, my income starts doubling and doubling to the where four years later, I was netting $5 million a year, which was 25 times uh, over what I'd ever made uh, in the prior 20 years. And of course, I felt so blessed, but I could see why it was working. I was suddenly focused only on what moves the needle. I tripled my discipline and I had new ideas come into my head that, that weren't coming in before. And, and all that was happening automatically. And interestingly, it also was affecting my health and, and ultimately my marriage. All at the same time, I'm impacting my income. And truly it felt like a superpower. And I was playing the game of life at a higher level. And, and maybe the, the best thing about it was I felt this immense sense of control over my life. And as I explain, you know, how this works, you'll see why, but control to a level I'd never experienced before. And so, you know, to wrap this up, I, I just became fascinated by the fact that you could take two key scientific principles and so materially impact your success and achievement in life that, that I wanted to share this with the world. So I sold my company, and this is about seven years ago, and I met the former chancellor and president here at the University of Texas, and he says, hey, you got to teach this at the University of Texas, and why don't we teach it together? So, um, you know, that's what I do sort of as my side gig. My real gig is, uh, is teaching this 12-minute-a-day superpower to driven entrepreneurs who, uh, who want to net seven figures a year and have the overall exceptional life. So um, there's one thing that I, I wanted to uh, dig in a little bit more with you on, and that is um, <clears throat> because I think a lot of people set goals, right? Right. And, and I mean, if you saw my office, I've got lots of goals and I've, I look back over the years uh, of, you know, sitting down and not just setting goals, but kind of mapping out what I'm going to do to accomplish those goals. One of the things that I have found, and I've even found this in coaching people myself, is that I think we, uh, or at least in my case, I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone, but like we set a goal and that goal is either uh, not really what we want. Um, we don't really understand. I think you mentioned needle movers, right? right? Because it, it's like, and I, and I actually heard this from a, a, one of the conversations you had on a, a, doing my research for this uh, podcast in terms of the story of the self-storage guy. And maybe you yeah. can kind of talk briefly about that because he thought it was one thing that he should be doing, but it was really another. And before you even answered it, I was like, I know, you know, like it's easy from the outside to say yeah. what it is that moves the needle, but I'll just let you tell the story because I think it's so good. Well, you know, I tell you, I wish it was because I was so brilliant, but I think uh, the biggest factor is like you say, just an outsider uh, seeing it. And, right. and so this is, and this is a guy uh, up in uh, Portland that uh, uh, does uh, many warehouse and storage uh, uh, properties, develops them. And, and he's sort of typical of, <clears throat> of uh, most of my clients. Half my clients are already netting over a million dollars a year, and half of them are, are under a million dollars a year. And so he's, he's netting about two million. When he came to me, he was netting about two million dollars a, a year and really sharp guy. And, and so I start working with him and uh, I asked him, I said, well, you know, what, what moves the needle in your business? And he goes, well, uh, getting properties that I've recently acquired, getting them uh, completed and getting them leased up. And, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I don't think that really is what moves the needle. Uh, and I, I quiz him a little more and I, I go, well, what, what's your special talent? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, you know, I can just see opportunities and stories that other people can't. And so... I tell him, I go, to me, it appears that what moves the needle is to, is to get more properties in your evaluation pipeline uh, and have metrics around that and have a monthly goal and, and watch the trends and hold yourself accountable to that. And he took that one idea, which was already in his head, 
yeah. uh, and applied it. And now he's netting $4 million a year. And, uh, you know, it just shows, and I wish they were all that easy, but uh, it just shows you the power of, of, you know, seeing things a little differently and yeah. how materially that can change your life. Okay. So I want to ask that this came to me because uh, as you were saying, a gentleman making $2 million a year comes to you. Like, why does someone that's already earning that kind of money say, you know what, I want John or a coach to help me. You know what I mean? Like it, like you, I, I think for a lot of people that would hear that they would think I could see someone that's making a hundred or 200 K a year, or maybe even three that they want to get to the, but at 2 million a year, that's that, that person is, is doing very well. And yet what is it? Is it they're driven? Is it like what what motivates them to hire you and then uh, listen to your advice? Well, I th I think you you hit on it, Shane. Um, and maybe the best way to to share with you uh, why would be a, a story about um, uh, Darren Hardy. Do you know who, yes. who Darren Hardy is? Well, th and this happened like. Uh, probably, oh, there, yeah, there you go. Great book. Uh, you know, I make my, uh, my, uh, 20 year old, uh, college students read that book. It's so good. Um, but anyway, so, you know, three or four years ago, um, I'm like, you know, if I'm going to spend the rest of my life on this, I want to, I want to show it to the top expert in the world on success. Mm -hmm. And I perceive that he's that guy. So I ended up spending three days with him <clears throat> and I wanted to find out if there's anything like it or if there's flaws in it or just just his input. And so he and I sit down and he looks at it and he he goes, this is good. And he looks closer. He goes, wow, this is really good. But he says, John, people aren't going to spend 12 minutes a day on this. And <laughs> I'm like, Darren, how the heck can that be? Uh, it 25 X my income. Time Magazine did a cover story on the science behind my methodology, and we're applying in the top book of the world on success. I mean, what do you mean they're not going to spend 12 friggin' minutes a day? Yeah. And he laughs and he goes, well, John, you know, you're, you're new to the success business. And he says, uh, the dirty little secret is that most people won't do anything to impact their success and achievement in life. And he says, you only need to show this to people that are driven because for most people, more success is merely a preference. I yeah. loved how he said it, merely a preference. But, you know, driven people, whether they're making 200,000 a year or 2 million, all want to go to that next level. And, and so that was so insightful for me and it evolved me to being selective about who I teach it to because uh, I'm about having impact and I want to teach it to people that are actually going to use it and, and, and are driven. Okay. Can I, I want to drill down on that for a little bit, John, okay. because I want to understand. Um, I think for me, I know I'm driven and I have like, you know, um, like a, like a, a purpose for why, why I'm doing things and what I'm doing. And then I will meet people and I will offer to help them or you'll give them everything that you possibly can. And you see very little that comes out of it. And then there's yeah. other people that take it like half what you've given them. You know what I mean? Like you give them a fraction yeah. and they just friggin' hammer it. Yeah. How do you determine if someone is driven? Like how, like what are the, um, yeah, like how, how can you gauge whether or not someone is going to um, step up and do what's necessary versus someone that tells it to your face and then they go off. And within three months, you're like, well, what the hell's going on? Like I've given you right. the, tools, the systems, the strategies, but nothing has changed. Cause that well, to me is very frustrating. Yeah. Oh yeah. I hear you. I, I mean, I've, I lived through that and, and, you know, I, I want to hear what pains that they had in their life. Um, what, what is the why behind it? You know, uh, and, and it's an emotional thing. Like, like, you know, I can tell with you instantly that you're driven. I mean, I just, just feel it. Hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, we haven't, we haven't even talked that, that long, but I can, you know, 
and uh, I can just feel it. And I think it's a combination of asking their why, understanding their pains, uh, and and the more you do it, the more you you get a feel for it. What would be like? I, I'm. I think sometimes when I have conversations with people, uh, and this might be just my upbringing, but I'll. I won't actually go deep with someone on their pain because I feel like I'm either intruding or they wouldn't be having the conversation with me if they weren't already kind of motivated. But what would be like an example of a question that you would ask someone where you're like, it would, it would allow you to know whether or not they were on the right path. You know what I mean? Like, how, like, how right. does that, I'm just curious how that right. conversation goes. And when you're, if you're listening to this, you can ask yourself this question. I think it might be helpful. Well, you know, I think, I mean, the way I do it is yeah. I go, what do you want to achieve in three years? What, what, what do you want your life to look like in three years, mm -hmm. both in your career, in your marriage, in your health? And, and as they tell me that, then the, the big question is why, mm -hmm. why is that important to you? Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, like when I was, uh, striving to, to go over a million dollars. I just wanted freedom. I didn't need two houses uh, in different places and I didn't need the jet, but I needed freedom. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I will dig at why is that important to you for whatever you're, you're going for. And, and you can, you know, you can just see and hear the energy with which they say it, you know, if they, they say it without energy, big tip off. Right. Okay. Let me ask you this then when you were in your thirties and forties, cause you worked hard, right? Mm -hmm. You were hustling. Right. What was it that, was it an event? Was it a process? Like what um, drove you to, um, to kind of flip the switch? Like with, were you, were you in a lot of pain in the thirties and forties or was it okay? Like what was the, you know, Great question. No, I, you know, I had, I had what I'd consider an average life, but, but, you know, the, the, the thing that flipped it was, uh, turning 50. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you something personal that, that, uh, and, and this is, uh, sort of emotional to tell, but, <clears throat> you know, obviously turning 50, you feel that scarcity of time that, that, you know, your life is running out and if you're going to make it happen, you better make it happen now. But the other thing that was going on for me was that, uh, uh, my mom was dying of pancreatic cancer and, and every day I would go to the, uh, hospital to see her. And, um, she's in the, <clears throat> in the hospital probably for two months. So every day I'd go see her, it'd be after work. I'd spend a couple of hours with her and then I would walk out of the hospital into the dark parking lot, get my car and I would just cry my eyes out. And, and what was going on obviously was, uh, you know, I was feeling losing my mom, but also I was feeling like I was letting her down because her, my mom and dad gave me every advantage. They sent me to Jesuit high school in Dallas and, just every advantage. And, and all I had was an average life. Um, uh, and, um, I wasn't making a dent in the world and I just felt like I had, I, I, I had so much more potential yes. and, uh, and I see that it was that, that feeling of losing my mom coupled with letting her down as she was passing to the next world that made me go into thinking grow rich and dig deeper than anybody on the planet ever had. And, uh, uh, you know, I see that that's why I discovered what I discovered when I couldn't discover it when I was 41 and read the book. Yeah. You know, I, um, I have a few people in my life that I would consider to be very influential you know, highly successful from not just one perspective in terms of money, but other areas as well. And it seems like the commonality that they have is such a high respect for their time. Um, and I, and I feel in 
the two cases that I can think of just off the top of my head, they both lost uh, loved ones very early. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they just have a deeper respect for how precious time is. And, and I think, you know, myself included, where it's easy to treat your time like it's infinite, which is right. not the case. And, and I must say that, you know, since I came into your, you know, work and just being really kind of aware of the people in my own life that are operating at a really high level, um, I've started to be what some people might consider to be more selfish with my time. Right. Uh, and, and that might come across as, as um, I don't know, people might take it the wrong way, but it's not meant to be. It's just like, look, we only have so much time. And if you have kids and a family and whatnot, like that's, what's most important. It's not, you know, screwing around doing things that aren't to your point going to move the needle. Right. Um, right. So um, I, I, I really appreciate you sharing that John, because it, it helps me um, understand where this this framework is even coming from. So I don't know if you want well, to jump off on anything there. Or... Well, it, well, you know, I tell you, it reminds me of how I was in my 30s and 40s, you know, just this, this disconnect between my efforts and my results. And mm -hmm. like, you know, for for 20 years, I'm thinking, when is this going to change? And, you know, I worked harder than all my friends. So I'm like, well, I deserve big, big success. Yeah. Um, which is a whole nother thing we could talk about. Uh, you know, working hard is one thing, but working smart is another. Um, and, and, you know, and I hope this doesn't sound egotistical, but I just felt like I was sharper than most of the other people around me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you sure <laughs> couldn't tell it from my results, but that's what I thought. Yes. And, and, you know, I just couldn't get that, that traction and, and, you know, we, we talked about it a minute ago, the average life, you know, I got to say, I hated the average life because I felt like I was destined for so much more. And, and, you know, the average life, at least in the United States, and I'm sure in Canada as well, is, you know, only 30% uh, of people are happy, according to Gallup. And most people have on a scale of one to 10, a five marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, two thirds of the people are overweight or, or uh, obese and average to me is a nightmare. And, and th there's another way to play this game of life. And, and, you know, as you probably know, thinking grow rich is, is, is it, it, there's two principles to it. First, the idea of applying science yes. to your life, to up your success, to, to leverage yourself. Well, that's an interesting idea. And, and the book is based on the fact that 95% of your daily actions are unconscious. So Shane, think about this. Your daily actions, the cumulative effect of your daily actions is what determines your success in each area of your life. Therefore, if 95% of those daily actions are unconscious, the only way for you have to have a higher level of success than you're currently having is to influence those unconscious daily actions. And, and you do that by proactively uh, uh, rewiring your autopilot so that those daily actions happen automatically without thinking. Okay, I just, I just, I just want to like pause on that because I think it is so key, John, and that is that I've heard this multiple times, right? We operate unconsciously. And I will say that I never um, maybe appreciated how important that was. And only recently have I started to intentionally do things differently because I, I'm, I'm just forcing myself out of that unconscious habit and rhythm because it's like, okay, if, if I just stay doing the same thing, it's very difficult to imagine I'm gonna get anything different. Yeah, right. Right. So even just as simple as saying, okay, instead of staying at home for the first hour and a half to do my deep work, I'm going to go to Starbucks where I'm out of my comfort zone, out of my element. And just, so is that like, maybe you can just talk a little bit about how someone would go about getting out of their 95% unconscious uh, routine. Well, you know, I tell you, uh, Shane, uh, one of my clients gave me a great lesson not too long ago. Yes. She says, you know, 
you say 95% of your daily actions are unconscious. Well, people hear a lot of facts and figures. They don't know if it's true or not true. And, and you know, when I f start working with someone, I make them Google it. Literally, if you Google what percentage of your daily actions are unconscious, 95% yes. uh, will come up in big dark letters. But the other thing she was telling me, she says, it's one thing to intellectually understand it, but until someone thinks about, well, how does that impact my life yes. and take that next step to get a deeper understanding of it. Like, like in your case, wh what do you think the implication is for you that 95% of your daily actions are unconscious? I mean, a few things uh, that come to mind would be, uh, I'll, I'll use health as a good example. Mm -hmm. So I've had this goal of running a marathon for three years. This mm -hmm. is the first year I signed up. Right. So now it's like, right. um, I know that my body weight at call it 205 to 210 is not optimal, right? Like literally on my, on my 12 minutes here, right? it should be 195, between 193 and 197. So 195 is my midpoint. And so I think um, I have become more conscious of what I eat because that's really what it is. Right. Like I work out six, seven days a week. It has nothing to do with working out. It has everything to do with eating and eating for comfort, eating for, because I get stressed, uh, eating, mm -hmm. you know, to right. feel good. And, and so, um, and I don't, I'm not even aware of it half the time, right. Until it's right. like, I look back over the week and it's like, well, nothing has changed. Right. Right. Well, you know, I'll give you a, a perfect example of this. Uh, um, and this happened not too long ago. In fact, it, it happened with my client that I was telling you about it in Portland. He was, he was in San Antonio. This was around Christmas and I decided I'd go see him and, and uh, San Antonio is about an hour's drive from, from Austin. And so I get my wife to, to go with me and we were both out and about. And I said, well, Ginge, meet me at uh, Starbucks at two o'clock and then we'll get in one car and go. Well, um, I get to Starbucks a little early and uh, uh, I decide I'm going to have a, a brownie. You know, it's Christmas. What the heck? Yes. So I, I started eating the brownie and, and, you know, in my 12 minute a day programming, I feed to myself every day that I'm aware of everything I put in my mouth. Okay. So I'm aware of it and I'm also aware it's not very good, but I finish it, finish the brownie. Ginger shows up, we jump in my car and I'm driving to San Antonio. And I notice that I've lost my appetite and I, I just don't feel very good. And so I get home that night and I'm like, I'm changing one word in my programming. I'm going to change from I'm aware of everything I put in my mouth to I evaluate everything I put in my mouth. Well, next wow. night we go out and have Mexican food with her son. I order tacos and the tacos come and they're not very good, except this time I'm evaluating everything I put in my mouth. And I just slide those tacos away and don't have another bite. And that happens automatically without thinking. And I remember that night uh, laying in bed and I'm like, wow, if that's not a superpower, I don't know what, what is. When you can get yourself to take the right actions yes. uh, automatically without thinking. And, and, you know, one of the things I, I discovered when I was blessed to start netting multiple seven <clears throat> figures a year, I discovered there, there were seven key habits that, that made that possible. And through this methodology, uh, it makes those seven habits ha happen automatically without thinking. And, and, and that's the point of understanding this idea that 95% of your daily actions are unconscious. When you really get that and you really see that that uh, that's the key to having uh, much higher success in your life. I mean, to me, the most profound thing I ever learned was that 95% of my daily actions were unconscious. Because once I got that and figured out how to rewire my autopilot, boy, it was a whole new life. So, um... What would be an example of one of the key habits, John? Because to me, that seems to be 
an element that starts to rewire, right? Because right. it's not, a, it's not so much about trying to willpower yourself into eating healthy or going to the gym right. or finding deals because that, that is going to, uh, in most cases, like it's going to fade in 30 days, I would imagine. Right. I mean, right. Like most people that try to set new year's resolutions, if that, and, yeah, exactly. It's probably two weeks at, at best. Right. So like what, what can someone do that's listening to this right now? If they say, you know what, I really would like to, you know, start investing in commercial real estate. I would really like to drop 10 pounds or 20 pounds, whatever it happens to be. Um, what would be a strategy or a habit that they could, they could start to implement right now? Well, you know, I think the, the first thing is, uh, uh, you know, figuring out what moves the needle in your, in your business. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that, that's that's sort of the starting point and and i don't i don't know do we have time to share a little of the science so that yeah, yeah, people yeah. okay um well well let me let me sort of give you how this this works and and give you give your audience sort of the framework for um for this um essentially we all have two fundamental problems we have to overcome the first one is that we're innately wired for survival, mm -hmm. which causes us to be fear-based, reactive, and negative. And of course, that was all good 5,000 years ago when, you know, there was danger around every corner, but it's exactly to the opposite if you want to be productive, creative, and happy. And then the, the other thing is, you know, 95% of your daily actions are unconscious. Therefore, you, you don't control those actions they're influenced by your, your unconscious uh, uh, innate programming, which again causes you to be reactive and negative. And, and, uh, uh, and so that is the problem. And, and the way you, you overcome it is by uh, essentially reprogramming your autopilot. And, and to explain how to do that, um, here's how the human mind works. The conscious mind sets the intention and is influenced by logic, but the subconscious mind controls your everyday actions, and it's only influenced by repetition. And, and the best way to give you an example of this, let's say you want to lose weight. Well, the conscious mind sets the intention to lose weight based on the logic of the health benefits, but the subconscious mind, uh, which controls your daily actions, is only controlled by repetition or influenced by repetition. And, and the reason people aren't losing weight is not from lack of intention, it's, it's from lack of influencing those actions of eating and, and exercising. And, and what I find sort of interesting about this is the part of the brain that controls um, your actions is a more primitive part of the brain than what controls your intentions. You know, your intentions take more brain power to figure out uh, what you want than the part that controls your actions, which, you know, the, the logical uh, intentional part of your brain can figure out what the actions are, but the subconscious mind is what executes those actions. And you can see that, that in light of the fact that it's only influenced by repetition, that's why the essence of what I teach people, and this is this is exactly how it works, you you take your life and you create immense clarity. You you define here's exactly the person I want to be, here's exactly what I want to accomplish, and here's precisely how I'm going to achieve my clearly defined goals. And when you take that and feed it to yourself every day, uh, after approximately 21 days, the, the subconscious mind will, will accept the programming and then it will start feeding it back up to yourself uh, and influencing your daily actions and thoughts. And those upgraded thoughts and actions create the life you want. I mean, it's powerfully simple. Does that make sense? It, it, it really does. And I can see really why <clears throat> or where in my life now that I think about what, what you're describing, um, you know, 
if if I'm trying to will myself or force myself, if you will, without pro reprogramming, um, it's it's really an uphill battle, and and um, right, yeah, it doesn't get you very far. Well, and I tell you, one thing I look uh, back on my life, I wish I had somebody sort of to to mentor me. Yes. Uh, and and uh, and you know, I had coaches in a time or two, but I, I wouldn't overly impressed with them, to be honest with you. And, and I see that, that I truly feel blessed for how my life has turned out. And I see that if I can make somebody else's path easier and, you know, most coaches have not netted seven figures a year, mm -hmm. because if they netted seven figures a year, they wouldn't be coaching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, so I, what I try and do with clients is, is, is a combination of mentoring plus methodology mentor them and teach them those seven habits and you know one of them being figuring out with them what moves the needle and then the methodology makes the seven habits show up automatically without thinking and you know one thing you'd find interesting sometimes yeah. people go well this won't work on me right i'm like this works on everybody i mean it's pure science how, how can it not work if you're human how can you it not work? But I see that while it works for everybody on everybody, yes. it's not for everybody because like, like we were talking in the green room, uh, you know, most people um, won't put in the effort to create the clarity. You know, the 12 yes. minutes a day is easy. That's easy. Yeah. But creating that clarity is hard. Yeah. Uh, of course, I think it's a, it's a labor of love. If you're talking about creating clarity about your own life, Yes. you know, I mean, why would that be work? But, but nevertheless, people, it takes work and takes effort and we help people with that. But, but even though we're helping them, it's still hard. Yes. And so, um, you know, again, that's sort of why we want to make sure we're only working with driven people because we don't want to go down the road of, of them, doing our program and then not doing the work of getting that clarity. Right. And getting the results, right? Because that's as a, as a coach and as a mentor, <clears throat> excuse me, it's um, when you care about people, you get very frustrated. At least I get very frustrated when I, when I don't see someone get the yeah. outcome that they, that they said that they wanted. Right. right. And, and often uh, I have taken that personally where it's like, what have I done wrong? Right. And, and, um, but I think the insight that you learned from Darren Hardy that you shared earlier, that now has kind of given me a new lens, if you will, which is that it's really up to the individual that's coming to you. Do they have that emotional uh, connection to, and a deep enough why to push through? Because I suspect there's going to be some uncomfortable times for them to go through uh, you know, in terms of creating that clarity, following through, doing the work. Um, is there anything like I, I, I've heard um, you mentioned thinking time on a, on a different uh, podcast. And I don't know if right. we have enough time right now or not, but just high level. Can you just share what that is? Because I right. don't hear enough people talk about this. Well, it's, it's something that's been transformative for me. And, and the top people in the world do this where they, they set aside time two times a week to just think yeah. to just to deep think this isn't regular thinking um you know i work with the uh, uh head coaches at the university of texas and i taught them this not too long ago and they were like well i'm thinking all the time i'm like boys wait a minute sure you're thinking all the time but you're not deep thinking that's where the juice is and, and essentially the idea is, is uh, to, to explain it quickly, you, you pick two times a week, typically Wednesday and Saturday, uh, Saturday or Sunday. <clears throat> That's when I do it. Mm -hmm. um, pick your favorite place in your, in your, at your home or in your office, not, not your regular workstation. And then it's, then you get your thinking tablet, which is basically blank sheets of paper in a nice leather binder. And um, then it's a three-step process. You, and each singing session lasts about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. first, first step, 
takes five to 10 minutes. Just let whatever come to you come. Don't try and guide it. Just see what, what's in your head that's coming out. Then the second step, this is where you take it a little deeper. You figure out a question to ask yourself. Like, like the first question would probably be, what moves the needle in my business? Uh, uh, but you, know, you figure out the question that, that you want the answer to and you write it down. And then you spend the next 20 minutes answering that question. Then the third step is you draw a line under the last thing you wrote and you write the two or three takeaways as well as the two or three uh, action steps. And then you take those action steps and put them on next week's to-dos. And Shane, the reason this works is because like when you get your week going on Monday, yeah. you're talking to people just like we're talking today. We're, we're talking, we're exchanging ideas, but we don't necessarily know right then and there what the implication to our life is. But, but you give your subconscious mind a couple of days to process it and a, a consistent output venue to feed it back to you. It is such a game changer. And, and you know, I've, I can tell you 10 examples of where this thinking time, I, one idea was <clears throat> ended up being a $6 million idea that came from that. Uh, but so often in, in my business, when, you know, I had a 175 employees and we were grossing 25 million and netting 5 million, there's a lot going on. And these thinking sessions would help me really see what's going on and see what needs to happen. And I see that in my methodology, these thinking sessions adjust your direction and the 12 minute a day influences your daily action. So, so you got to go in the right direction and you got to take the right actions. And that's why these two sort of fit together. I'm very happy that we discussed that, uh, John, because um, I've heard about thinking time. I've tried it, uh, but I never stuck with it. And I think right. I was trying to do too much of it. And right. I, I, you know, just, you know, starting off with two days a week, I like how you've been so specific. Wednesday, because trying to do it on a Monday or Tuesday when you're like overwhelmed with too many things right. on the go, it's right. hard to, I think, get into that frame of mind, if you will, right? But you're all in doing mode on Monday and Tuesday. That's right. Right, right. This is tremendous. You know, I tell you, um, and, and here's what's different yes. with this from everything else in the success and human achievement field. You know, everybody else is teaching people strategies and, and candidly, very good strategies, I think, oftentimes. Yes. But, you know, you have strategies coming out your ears. Mm -hmm. What you need is to get great strategies to show up automatically without thinking. That's mm -hmm. the game changer. And that's what this does that, that I don't see anybody else able to do, do it to the level we're able to do it with. This has been amazing. I want to be respectful of your time, John. Where can people learn more about this. They hear this, they say, you know what, this makes sense for me, right? I would like to learn more about John, think it be it. How would they do that? Uh, go to thinkitbeit.com slash podcast. And, and I'll share something with you that I, I really haven't shared before. And I, I've, I so loved your questions and just your energy with this. One of the things I, I, used to think until yes. recently was I have what I think is this amazing methodology and and you know I'm I'm honored that my alma mater the University of Texas considers it the top application in the world <laughs> of the top book in the world but the way I have taught it in the past is is taken people for eight weeks and and explained it to them and and worked them through it and then um uh, basically sent them on their way. And I just read an amazing book uh, called uh, Change or Die. And the, the principle is that, uh, uh, you know, people that have what they call a widow maker heart attack, 40% of them die when they have it and 60% of them live. Yes. But guess what percentage of them actually make the lifestyle changes they need to what, what would be your wild guess 
I'm going to say 10%, but you're that's... right on really you're right on. Yeah. It's actually, it's, it's 7%, but, mm -hmm. but, and wow. what I got from that was that fear will not change people. Mm -hmm. And what, what they spend the whole book talking about is, is you have to, you have to have somebody that you relate to. He calls yeah. it the three R's. Uh, you got to have someone that you relate to, somebody that teaches you the right actions, yeah. and somebody that uh, changes how you look at things. And, and, you know, the essence of that is create a tribe. And that's what we've evolved into is we see that, you know, you can't just teach people this methodology and wish them the best. We got to incorporate them in, because this is a new way of doing life. This yeah. is just, you know, it truly is a new way of doing life. And so they need the support. And, and of course, I love everybody that does it. And, and we're, you know, we're so happy with the, the results that they come, that come from it and how it changes people's lives, that it's just an honor to give it to them. So we're just passionate about it. This has been so much fun, John. I really appreciate you taking the time to share this. I mean, I, I have uh, three, four pages of notes. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I love this. I mean, uh, you know, personal development, the really kind of, to your point, the science of how to uh, get what it is that you're, um, that you've set out to, to accomplish, if you will. And so, right, right. Um, I, I really appreciate it. So just one more time, if someone wants to get that more information, it's, 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 uh, thinkitbit.com slash podcast. And, and we do a master class, which, which really shows you in detail, the science and shows exactly how this works. And, you know, uh, really the nuts and bolts, we, we covered this on a sort of a high level, but, yeah. uh, that's what the master class does. And, uh, yeah, I think people will get a ton out of it. Perfect. Well, I, I will be one of those people uh, that joins it. And uh, just once again, thank you very much, John, for, uh, for joining me today. My pleasure.